Welcome back. You made it to another module. So far, so good. I know module two is long. It has a lot more reading than the other modules. There are a lot of basics in here that we need to get under our belts first and understand some things that will apply throughout the rest of the modules. So there is a little bit more reading, but I want to give you a little bit of an overview in this video and then let you get started with reading and some practice and get through module two. Uh, one of the things that you'll learn about in this module is the difference between a tell and a sell document. Those are the two main categories in technical writing. Tell documents are just informative. Uh, maybe it's a description, maybe it's some instructions, maybe it's some background information, uh, maybe it's things for them to follow step by step, but those kinds of things are tell information. The other kind is sell documents. You're trying to persuade or inform uh, convince someone to do something. There's an element of a decision in a cell document. These can take all different kinds of forms. They could be um, letters, memos, emails, all different kinds of things can be cell documents. Another thing you'll learn about is this pyramid style of writing. Um, you'll start off with your main point first and then you use the body of your letter, your memo, um, whatever it is that you're writing, your document will be to support that, explain it, develop the ideas more fully, uh, get your examples in, all of those kinds of things. Um, in an email it works like that. You know, you have a, a topic, or a subject line, and in the beginning of the email, in the first sentence or two, tell what the message is going to be about, and people can decide whether or not they're going to read the whole message or not. Same thing with a newspaper article. I can read the headline and the first paragraph or two and at least get the gist of what the message is about and then decide whether or not I'm going to read the rest of the article to get the supporting information and all of the details about it. But if I only have time to read the headline and the first paragraph or two, I at least have a general idea of what it is about. Um, another thing that you'll learn about are these four, compor four compartments of business communication. The first part is that main point that you make at the very beginning. A summary statement or as you wrote essays your thesis statement it's what controls your message and what it's going to be about you tell people that right away and then they know what to expect if you're having trouble deciding what that is there's a little secret message that will help you pin that down there's six hidden words and if you are trying to nail down the main point of your message start your sentence with this I want to tell you that and then what's your main point and then you just take off those six hidden words at the beginning and bingo, you've got your main point. By the way, if you're having trouble picking out an essay thesis, that same trick works there too. The second component after the main point is the background information. The who, where, when, why kinds of things that explain the history of the situation or whatever it is so that the person has understanding of your topic. The third part is more, deta more details, what specifically has happened or is happening um, how has that happened? Why is it happening? What's the effect of that? Again, gives them more information to work with. And then the last part is the outcome. What, what outcome do you want to have done? If it's a tell document or a sell, what action statement do you want them to do? What, do, what action do you want them to take? So your four main components are that main point, the background, the details, and then the outcome. And if you follow that pattern in that order, your messages will be organized and people will have all the information that they need. Whether or not they recognize those four parts or not is not important, but they will understand that it's a well-organized, completely thought out document and they'll have the information that they need. Three different types of projects you're gonna work on for this module. One is a complaint letter and you'll find the details of the situation in the, in the assignment. But in this complaint letter, you'll follow this pattern. At the very beginning, you'll have a main point, and you'll explain what your complaint is about, and then you'll have background, and then details to support that point, and then finally you'll have your outcome. What action do you want this company or this person to take in response to your complaint? The second item that you'll write is a request memo. You're writing to your boss and, and it explains again the situation in the assignment, what you're asking for, and you do it the same way. You have your main point, you have the background and the details, and then the outcome, the request that you are making and what action you want the boss to take. And then the third thing that you'll write is a bad news letter where you have to, you have received a complaint from a customer and now you have to respond to that and explain why you cannot honor their request. This is a little different from the other styles of writing. In the bad news letter, you do not start off with your main point first. 
you want to start off with the explanation. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. This is what we've done to investigate the situation. Blah, blah, blah. This is what we have found. And cushion the blow before you just come right and tell, right out and tell them, we're not going to do what you asked us to do. Um, by the time they have read all of your explanation, detailing how you've investigated or how you've come to this decision, they will probably have reached the same conclusion before you actually tell them. Um, the other thing that you want to do is still offer some sort of a solution. Even if you can't give them what they're asking for, what else could you do for them to maintain that goodwill in this customer relationship? Could you offer something else instead? Or could you offer part of what they're requesting but not all of it? You want to maintain that good customer service relationship going on there. So you need to end with that. So with the bad newsletter, you'll start off with you know, thanking them appreciating their business, that kind of thing, um, explaining the situation and how you've reached the decision before you finally tell them the decision. And then end it with some sort of an offer, compensation of some sort, some, some solution to the problem that isn't what they asked for, but hopefully will maintain a good re relationship with them. One more thing I want to talk to you about is what's the difference between a letter and a memo? Letters are used for external communication. Companies use them to send outside of the company, to customers, to suppliers, things of that nature. Memos are used for internal communication within the company, to someone in another department or the same department, but it's used for an internal communication. They both have very structured parts to them. Letters have certain information that has to go into headings, dates, addresses, um, that kind of thing, greetings and signatures. And then memos also have a, a set format. They have a header that has the to, the from, the date, and the subject, the regarding line. And you fill those out and then the body of the message should be about the same as the body of the letter. Um, there's no signature block on a memo. It already has, is addressed in the from line at the top who the message is from. In that regard, e uh, Memos are very similar to email messages. They have a to, a from, a subject line. The date automatically pops in when a person receives the email. So those are formatted the same way. And you want to use that subject line to your advantage. A subject line that just says, hi there, doesn't really tell you what that message is about. But if you use that along with that main point, I want to tell you that the reader gets an understanding right away of what, what the message is going to be about and even whether or not it applies to them, whether they need, they need to read the whole thing or not. So use those to your advantage. Uh, I guess as always, email me if you have questions, and I'll see you on the flip side. Bye.